Thank you, Juan. 73, my friend. Goodbye. Hi, I'm Jim, W6LG, your ham radio Elmer here on YouTube. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California, home of the Rockland Rover Antenna. Um, my head of marketing is uh, Dick Deceiver, and he has uh, convinced some of the talking faces on YouTube that low-Q antennas like the Rockland Rover are a good thing because you don't have to tune them all the time. You can just park it on 20 meters and cover 20, maybe even 40 at the same time. So I uh, said in the last video that the Q of the Rockland Rover was five. And um, some folks have emailed saying, well, what does that mean? It's actually a really simple thing. And I'm gonna describe it in a couple of different ways. Um, one way is going to be with this. This can generate Q, and I'll show you why in, in just a couple of minutes. Uh, before I do that, let me uh, play some uh, video of me yesterday during the contest uh, working some DX stations with my Yagi antenna. We'll talk about my Yagi antenna, its Q, uh, and its performance right after this. So let's go take a look at just some snippets from uh, some DX contacts yesterday. CQ contest, CQ contest, Echo 2, Hotel Quebec. Echo 2, Hotel Quebec, contest. Whiskey 6, Lima, Golf. Whiskey 6, Lima, Golf, 59, Radio Alpha, Sierra Tango. Good morning, 596. 596, thank you, QSS. QSS, 4 Florida 1, Echo Bravo Delta Contest. Contest. Uh, whiskey 6 Lima Golf. Yeah, uh, Whiskey 6 Lima Golf, uh, 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 thank you, you're 5950. 596. Uh, okay, 06, uh, thank you, 73. 73, sir. You are that 4 Florida 1, Echo Bravo Delta Contest. Thank you, Bravo 1 Delta X Ray Contest. Thank you, Bravo 1 Delta X Ray Contest. Thank you, Bravo 1 Delta X Ray Contest. You want Whiskey 6 Lima Golf? Well, very strong signal. Again, uh, Lima Golf. Yeah, Whiskey 6 at Lima, Golf 5906. Thank you, Nelson. Very, very strong signal, my friend. You're 5954. Thanks, you on 73, my friend. Goodbye. Ticket contest, ticket contest. Delta X-ray, zero, hotel, queen. Whiskey 6 at Lima, Golf. Whiskey 6 Lima Golf, your Yeah, you're 5906. Whiskey 6 Lima Golf, you're 59, Papa, Alpa, Radio, Alpa. Uh, thank you for the contact. All right, 73. 73, Del Delta x 0, Hotel Queen, 73. Thank you. All right. 73 guys, nice to talk to you. Uh, N4GNR, ZS6CCY, -C -C not counterclockwise. Oh, jeez. CCY, W6LG, over. I've been called worse things, uh, Jim. Very loud now. Thanks for coming back and confirming the gods of propagation that opened the doors and windows. W6LG, ZS6CCY. All right, and you might find my latest YouTube video kind of interesting. It's a uh, distrust of uh, talking faces on YouTube. So that's my Yagi antenna, which has a Q of about 55 or so. So let's let's see how I figured the Q and why it might be important to you to know what the Q is of an antenna that you're going to purchase. Figuring Q is really simple, and I've got a short video uh, showing how I do that with the Yagi. It's basically 
finding the 2 to 1 SWR curve. So you plot out the 2 to 1 SWR curve, or you find out where at the low end of the band at the high end of the band where the SWR goes beyond 2 to 1. You take that difference in frequency, could be 100 kilohertz, could be 300 kilohertz, whatever that number is, and divide it into the center frequency. That's one way to do it. Um, I do it a little bit differently, but that's a way to do it. But back to this. This can, I've never seen anybody do this. So this, 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 I think will be a first. This is my fan. This is my Q fan. And on this side, it's a vacuum. On this side, it's a blower. So it blows out air. And it's a pretty wide dispersal area. So it covers a wide bandwidth. Now, if we're going to call this my Q multiplier. If I stick my Q multiplier in here, I got to put it tight because it'll blow it off. Um, then it takes and it narrows down the bandwidth from what was fairly large to a really small area. And it's, it's, it's a really powerful spray. So this is high Q. Can't get it off. This is low Q. It's very broad. It's weaker. This concentrates the uh, the signal into a small area. By the way, I'll, I'll cover this in a video because I, I can blow stuff like my keyboard. It's a handy little vacuum. It's more vacuum than anything else. The vacuum side uh, looks like this. So it sucks in here, goes through a filter, and the exhaust air comes out here. And obviously, you can use the exhaust air as um, a blower. So this is my little vacuum. I think it was $29. And I'll, I'll cover, cover that. There's a bunch of those uh, on YouTube, uh, on uh, Amazon. Concentrating, increasing the efficiency, high Q. If it's broad as a barn door, uh, the Q is low. Here is the Q of my uh, three element homebrew Yagi. Okay, about uh, 14030 at one end, 14285. So about um, 250 kilohertz of bandwidth. So let's figure out what the Q is then. Let's say one, 14,150 divided by 250 kilohertz equals a Q of about 56, which is really pretty good. So my marketing guy, Dick Deceiver, has convinced some talking faces that low Q is good and because it covers a wide range of frequencies, which is true. But as we learned with my fan or blower, that um, high Q with my Q multiplier is better than a uh, broad swath of frequencies. I think also of the magnetic loop antenna, sometimes in a square, sometimes in a circle. Um, they cover maybe five kilohertz and it's got to be retuned. Uh, what's the Q of one of those? Um, I calculated one, it was 1500. So that's very, very high, but that's the way they get the efficiency out of that antenna. So Q, Q is easily calculated. Two to one SWR curve, figure out how many kilohertz are in between, divide that number into the center frequency if you want, or where the antenna is resonant, and that'll give you the Q. If it's high Q, you may want to buy it. If it's low Q, like the uh, Rockland Rover with five, you may want to th rethink that, despite what Dick Deceivers told you about it. Um, that was the point of the five mentioned in the video, a Q of five. 
although I did that whole video just sitting here turning it out and thinking about it as I went, the Q of 5 I knew would be lousy, so that's the reason why I brought it up. Q of 5. So that explains Q. Think of that blower next time somebody says the antenna is low Q and that's desirable. In some instances, it may be, for example, I'm designing the Rockland Rover and I, and I don't want people to have to retune and I don't want a bunch of phone calls or a bunch of complaints, so I make the Q low. Most people don't understand that. So I make make it low Q. You can tap it here. You can tap it here. You get the same result. Uh, you have to go way beyond the normal tap points to get a different SWR. So it's good. Low SWR covers a wide range of frequencies. A, it, it's a great antenna. But then you measure the Q and you find out that, wait a second, this ain't so good. Another way to look at um, the Q of an antenna is just look at the antenna if it has a coil. As the diameter of the coil becomes smaller and smaller, the efficiency of that coil goes down quickly. And uh, think of like uh, the high Q antennas that Charlie made for a few years. They had a gigantic coil. Why did he do that? Well, he wanted to get as much efficiency out of that mobile antenna as he could. Hence the, the large coil diameter. Um, an antenna like the ATAS that has a very small coil diameter makes it easy to tune, but it's not very efficient, but it's easy to tune. Uh, whether you got a good ground on it or a good bond to the vehicle, the darn thing's going to tune, and they don't get many complaints because of that. And guys using it will say, well, I, I worked Ohio with it, or I worked Europe with it. You may have under ideal conditions but it's low Q makes it a not very good choice for most people. All right, that's my uh, Dick Deceiver. I can see off in the distance, he's really upset with me, but we'll just ignore him. I'm Jim W6LG in Rockland, California, saying 73. I hope the explanation made some sense. Uh, if it did or not, please, uh, please do subscribe, 73.